supporting rehabilitation and the impact on the LGPM. Section 2.1 raises awareness that the administration section is continuing to assess the policy intent of the new regulations as a number of the provisions are loosely drafted and issues are continuing to emerge upon closer scrutiny. Since the time of writing reform, the transitional regulations have been issued which put in place the remaining provisions and provide for the final salary link and protect the time and date for each 2014 membership. They also carry forward the 85 year old protections and introduce an underpin for members eight years away from normal retirement age at April so that they are not worse off under the new scheme. They do, however, exclude councillors from the scheme once their existing term of office ends. Thereafter, members will be able to make an election to draw pension benefits on or after age 60, regardless if they are immediately re-elected to office. The funds have sent briefing notes to those local authorities on their side to allow councillors to participate in the LGPM. Team leaders are undertaking training sessions with staff and are revising all operational processes and literature as the final regulations have now been issued. We are engaging with employers to provide information on the new payroll and HR requirements to support them to administer the new scheme. And since November, we have issued a countdown employer newsletter each month focusing on specific topics. Section 2.12 to 16 covers a collaboration project with Cheshire to implement the new scheme. There has been slippage from the targets set within the initial project plan due to the delay in the regulations, guidance and IT software. The plan has been rebased to enable both funds to prioritise the immediate requirements that will emerge from the 1st of April 14. 2.17 covers a scheme advisory board to call for structural reform based on the responses to the call for evidence. The board has made seven recommendations for the next steps to be taken with the key recommendations that the government should consult on the options for reform as soon as possible and the consultation should consider alternative methods for managing deficit and analyse the costs, benefits and barriers to greater passive, greater passive management collective investment vehicles and in-house investment strategies. The final section of the committee report refers to the fund response to the consultation on transforming rehabilitation, which details the basis of the transfer of probation plus liabilities to Greater Manchester Pension Fund. A copy of the response is attached and acknowledges that the regulations achieve the aim to transfer all liabilities without the requirement for a termination assessment. The main concern is that the provisions do not provide the ability to recover costs incurred in relation to advisory and administration costs. We have suggested that there should be provision to cover to recover reasonable costs by a reduction to the transfer share. The financial and resource implications of the transfer are noted under Section 7 as the transfer will involve assets in the region of £100 million pounds and the transfer of 1,500 member records. This will place further demands on pension staff resource at a time of considerable change. Members are requested to note the report and I'm happy to take any questions, Chair. Thank you, Yvonne. Members, questions, comments, Chair?
No, to be fair, they share the stage. So Mark Wynn from Cheshire Pension Funds covered part of the presentation, and then Fiona Miller from Cumbria covered the second part. But it's probably misleading. They weren't working collaboratively. They're just collaborating on the presentation, not on wider, wider issues. Any other comments, questions? Harry? Yeah, I'll just repeat what I said at the uh, at the briefing. I'm just very concerned at 7.3 about the fact that we could end up being sweaters and the staff being overworked. Uh, and I just hope that we don't expect too much of the staff. And I'm, what I don't want to hear is staff having a breakdown because they're working too hard. I admitted to say earlier that we do have, actually have a project plan um, in relation to the transfer of the liabilities or the member data over to uh, probation. And if uh, I will be monitoring it, and if I feel that we do need to engage the uh, services of the third party IT provider, then we'll do that. But there's certain elements of the, the requirements that do need um, the extra skills and expertise of staff within the funds, which I will be able to bring the agency staff to do that work. I, I agree with what Harry said. Um, it seems to me that we ought to look at the long term. And if we have, um, of course, we have great expertise, but if we don't have a sufficient quantity of that expertise, we should perhaps be looking towards engaging another member of staff in the long run. My understanding that this is for a specific project. It's about 1,500 records to be transferred. So, and you do have a project plan for that one. And that was obviously allocating resources and um, trying to plan the logistics so that we can have that one. Okay. We're being asked to note the report. Is that agreed? Agreed. Thank you. And before I move on, can I just say thank you, Fiona, for presenting. You don't, please don't feel free. You don't have to stay for the whole bar meeting if you, if you do want to withdraw. Okay, thank you. Okay, I'm moving on to agenda item five, which is the compliance manual. Peter? Thank you, Chair. This report seeks members' approval for a revised compliance manual. We brought the manual to previous committees. Uh, under section 2.4, we set out the principal changes. Firstly, under section 2.6, it's been updated to reflect the new care scheme that's coming in from 2014. Under section 3.3, this reflects the new uh, scheme of delegation at Wirral and the fact that I now report to the strategic director uh, rather than to uh, the former director of finance and also reflects reporting through the client WP and governance and risk working parties. Section 5.3, um, investment philosophies have been put into the compliance manual. We alluded to these in the statement of investment principles that we brought in November. They set out a framework for the management of the internal portfolios and are helpful in increasing internal controls and directing offices as to appropriate investments investment styles for the internal portfolios. Under six, section 6.2, we have uh, just increased guidance around overseas travel and the way that offices need to report to our internal compliance function. And then finally, section 10 uh, gives further guidance around budget monitoring. Uh, it's next due for full review in 2017, but clearly if there are any significant changes, those are brought to Members, questions, comments? Okay, we're being asked to approve the revised compliance manual. Is that agreed? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Moving on to agenda item six, MPF contracts. Peter. Thank you, Chair. This report is required under Wirral's contract procedure rules to inform the committee of three decisions taken under delegation by the strategic director. Under 2.1, our property value was Colliers. The original contract was for four years with the option to extend for a further two, and that option to extend was exercised. Uh, 
2.2 are strategic property advisors. Again, they're appointed for four years with the option to extend for a further two years, and that option was extended. And finally, under 2.3, uh, we sought a waiver of the contract procedure rules to enable the extension of the contract we have with one of our independent advisors. We recently appointed a second advisor, and it was felt that by allowing an extension, it would permit the contracts to be staggered and to provide additional continuity in terms of advice to the fund. So the report is for those who share and have any questions. Okay. Any questions? Okay. Can we have that report? to agenda item seven, which is the National Authority Conference. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. If I may take items seven and eight together because they're similar. Uh, the first, as you say, is the National Association of Pension Funds Conference, which is from the 19th to the 21st of May. Uh, section two sets out the theme of the conference and uh, committee is asked to consider whether it wishes to send a de delegation and if so to determine the number and allocation of places. And then secondly the LGBC conference which is on the 19th and 20th of June. Uh, 2.5 is, is incorrect, it should say the 18th and 19th. Uh, again, members are asked to consider whether they wish to be represented to determine the number and allocation of places. As always, we encourage member participation because this training development is an important element of the um, councillors' responsibilities to the fund. Okay, well, let, let's take them in order. The National Local Authority Pension Conference, which is on the 19th and 20th of, sorry, the 20th and 21st of this May. Well, yes. Okay. Um, do we want to send a delegation, and if so, in what numbers? I don't know if any volunteers. I think the, the difficulty with this particular conference, Chair, is that uh, it's a day before the local government elections on the 22nd of May. Um, I guess you're going to find it hard to get recruits for this. <laughs> Okay, so you may want to widen the scope to members who are not here this evening. Can I suggest that we do that? Indeed. Okay, thank you. Um, and with regard to the LGPC Trustees Conference, which is being held on the 19th and 20th of June in Bournemouth, do we want to send a delegation to that? Now, obviously this is post-election time, but certainly if you want to uh, volunteer, you may. Can, can we agree that we would want to send a delegation to this conference? Yeah. Okay, and then can we ask that in the, the, the names be sent through to Peter? Okay, can we agree? Can we agree? Um, is it usually one more one on this? One from each political party? In fact, this will be open to the other invitation. Okay. Okay. Often it's more convenient than the whole. Yes. Uh, I think most groups in Sheffield previously have been back. Right. Accessible for members. Okay. Uh, forgive me if it's been mentioned, but it's just post election this, so we may, we may have a different makeup on the committee. More Labour representatives. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, not wishing to enter into that, uh, very sorry, but yes, I think if, if we can ensure that names provisionally go forward to, uh, to Peter, you've got some indication of uh, clearly for travel and accommodation issues. Okay, all right, so we agreed on that? Thank you. Okay. Moving on to agenda item nine, which is the Cunard building. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, members asked me to bring a report back to this committee uh, following the sale of the Cunard building. Both negotiations at the sale were concluded on the 7th of March, and the uh, exempt appendix provides further financial information on that transaction. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any comments?
Everyone's views. The stage we've got something in exception on this point. Yeah, okay. Thank you. So uh come down that report? Thank you. Ten, which is the investment monitoring and working party minutes. Um, are we agreeing with these minutes, Peter? Yeah. We doing it yeah? Yes, yeah. please. And uh, just to point out that we are admitted to, I am admitted to include the strategic director in the attendees uh, on page 113, which is the very good career that we started. Make sure that's amended. Okay, can we approve the minutes of the investment monitoring working party which were attached? To the Thank you. Um, moving on to item 11, the uh, government and risk working party minutes. Similar recommendation. Can we approve those minutes? Thank you. Okay, item 12 is the Tonsgate development. Peter. Yes, thank you, Chair. Again, uh, apologies that this is a late item. Uh, the purpose of this report is to uh, ask members, seek members' approval for the course of action advised by CBRE. The uh, appendix contains exempt information around the financial implications of the proposal to committee. In January, there was an initial report uh, following the feasibility study and a further assessment of the situation. My advisors believe that a more significant redevelopment is appropriate to take advantage of the strength of the property market and Tonsgate's particular characteristics. Um, a number of procurements will, be need to, will need to be undertaken and they will be undertaken in accordance with the rules of contract procedure rules. So, following consideration of the exempt item, members are asked to approve the recommendation of CBRE. Thank you, Chair. Okay, any questions, comments? Okay, can we agree that recommendation? Thank you. Okay. Item 13 is the, um, the exclusion of members of the public. I'm going to move the appropriate exemption to exclude members of the public from the meeting during consideration of the following items of business. Uh, thank you and thank you for your attendance. Uh, it hasn't been seconded. Uh, can I have that second? <laughs> okay, thank you.